Hello. This one's a little experimental, so I'm gonna split it over two parts. This one deals with bullet and how we can stagger a gravity drop with an object made of lots of parts. Here's our object, it's just one object made of lots of boxes. The grid says it's at one meter, so it is a quite large object. We'll start off just by moving it up here. I'm giving it a little bit of a turn. We'll go to the effects tab and we'll go to the bullet area and we want this to be a parts body. So click on that and then let's open up the item properties. So that's very straightforward. We hit the play button and it all drops down, but it all drops down as one big piece. Now I wanna split this up. I wanna sort of start at the bottom and then stagger this release. So how do we do that? Well, first we go over to the world tab and we turn off gravity. So that's gone and it has no influence on our cubes. Next we'll add a null. Let's call it force field. So there's our force field null. Again, we'll go over to the bullet area and we'll tell this one to be a force field. Doesn't look like it's done much. If we go over to world and under draw forces, we will say all. And there it is. So if we press play now, all it will do is it will just go up because we've got a strength of one in the plus. So if we put the same, let's say minus 10, just to round it off, that is effectively now doing exactly the same as our gravity. But this has the added bonus of being able to use textures. We'll create a new null and we'll call this one trigger. And we'll give it a little bit of an item shape of a ring. It's a shame that doesn't auto update. Uh, but anyway, okay to that. Here's our trigger null and we're gonna use this to stagger the drop of these parts. Back to the force field null. So we'll select that in the bullet window under strength, we'll click on the texture button. Where we got image map, we'll select. Well, actually the gradient, we could just mention briefly. You could use this now set to uh, one of these input parameters here, like the uh, Y distance or distance object. But the trouble with that is you've got like a circular fall off around that. But we don't want that. We want full strength gravity once it's past a certain point. So we're not gonna use a gradient. We're gonna use a procedural texture. Under procedural type, Let's type in node. There we go, node editor is what we want and texture value we need at full strength. Before we take this any further though, we're gonna insert a little remapping. So under add layer, we're gonna add a gradient set to previous layer. We're gonna tell it that where it's black, we're gonna have a value of black. And where it's a value of one, we're gonna have a value of minus 10 as we did previously. So this way I can just use values of zero to one here and it'll get remapped automatically for me. So let's go back to the texture and let's edit nodes. I'm gonna keep this super simple, but I'm gonna show how it works. First, always a bonus. <laughs> so let's go for a gradient. There we go. So double click on the gradient and the input, I'm just gonna keep on Y coordinates. To start, I'm gonna put a minus number in here. So let's make it minus 10 so it's off the screen down here somewhere. And we'll make that white. Going back to this other key, I'm gonna leave it black or zero value, but I am gonna make it stepped. We'll output that into the value. This is minus three at the moment, so let's make that zero so we can see what's going on. If we nudge the screen, it'll update. I think it'll update also if we turn on Studio Live. So as you can see underneath, Zero here is white, which means full strength. Increase the numbers here, and everything above this line is no strength. So all we have to do now is replace this value with the position of the null. So we'll show key inputs. Click on it to update. And we need an item info. Point that to our trigger null. So there we go, trigger. And I'm gonna use a DBNW channel blender node here. Channel blender just to extract the Y detail. So position into the vector and the Y into the position. Now, if you don't have DBNW's tools, I would suggest firstly getting them, but you could also replace it with a vector scale node. So there we go, it does exactly the same thing, just set to Y. 
but it's a slightly more tedious setup. Okay, so with that set up, I'm making sure to keep this key miles away. Let's just make it 100. Select the trigger now. We're now ready to animate this fall off. Let's close this down. We don't need those at the moment. I'm going to disable the dynamics. One on the keyboard for front view. I'm going to move this trigger just below this bottom point here. I'm going to make sure I'm on modified. I'm going to frame 50. I'm going to move it up. So I've cleared the top box there. So I untick Studio Live, just save a bit of process power. And all I have to do now, hopefully, is turn on the dynamics and press play. Yeah. There we go. Now, if you wanted to do this from left to right, you would go into here, back into the nodes. Obviously, you'd need to animate the trigger null left to right, and then you would just change the gradient from Y to X or Z, whichever direction you're going to go. Also, it's worth noting, let's just go to the trigger null, and we're going to make that really slow. Now, you see the bottom one on its own is just dropping. This is because of our activation time. So if you go to the box, click on activation, our deactivation time is one second. And anything after that, if nothing's happened, it will freeze. So the way around this, obviously, we could always have it active. Or we could keep it on the start active and we can make it a longer deactivation time enough to cover our last piece. So I've made that a 10 second activation time to cover that. If you go this route, you may have to be a little bit more proactive animating the damping, especially if things start getting a bit jittery towards the end. We all know what that's like. I'm going to set this back to as it was. And always remember, if it doesn't quite react as you think it should, hit the reset button. Underworld draw force field none. I'm turning that off. Let's create a new null. We'll call this ground. Okay, now I want this to be a static body. So again, under the bullet area, I want to click on static, open up its item properties. And typically enough, and I've just turned something off. I need to turn it back on again. I think this is under, is this under, there we go. Now I'm not going to scale the null. I'm going to do it directly in this panel here. Over to the items, transform scale. Let's make that 20. Let's make it a bit narrow. And let's make that 20 again. So it's good to know you don't need a full on ground object. This static object here, playing around with the scale seems to do the trick quite nicely. So let's hit the play button and let's see what we got. That's nice, it's a bit slow. We'll go back to the force field. Under the properties, we've got this Y of one. I found if you just use that, it's almost like a multiplier, so it should speed things up quite nicely. There we go. Let's go back to the boxes. Let's give them a bit of bounce. So let's put 90% in there. One thing I will change actually is the shape is currently set to mesh, which is the slowest evaluation, top being the quickest, I think. And because we're dealing with boxes, they might as well be boxes. So that'll change the sim a little bit. Also another tip, if we are getting a little bit too jingly jangly, we could go over to the world and we can increase the dynamic frame rate. Obviously that'll have a performance hit, but you do get nice and more accurate results, I think. So that's the bullet part of it dealt with for part one, and I'm gonna look into adding a bit of open VDB and some displacements for the next part. Oh.